baseball great. The incomparable Reggie Jackson talk about his experiences with racism while playing in Birmingham as a minor leaguer in the late 60s, mid to late 60s. He talked about some experiences he had with racism, overt, blatant racism, because Birmingham was still under segregation. So let's hear what Race Bader, Ryan Clark, has to talk, has to say about that. <sighs> Listening to Reggie Jackson, man, it, it made me sad for him. And he was so strong that he... They all they want to co-opt his um his racism. Hey man, can I co-opt your racism, Reggie? Can I get some of that racism over here? Listening to Reggie Jackson, man, it, it made me sad for him. And he was so strong that he was able to recall all of those stories. And everybody actually laughed in the end. And they hugged and he joked. And he actually laughed as well we're talking about a guy that has or a man that has five world series championships two world series mvps an mvp they call him mr october and he played 21 years so that spanned it from 67 on up and think about what he said about being in birmingham that he had to rely on allies right he had people like his coach uh johnny mcnamara in birmingham he had charlie finley in Baltimore, those are the people that he needed so he could eat in certain places, so he could sleep in certain places. And that's why when we get to today and people like Fred, people like Channing, people like me try to explain that racism still exists, we're not explaining it so we can. <laughs> Ryan. Racism doesn't still exist. That statement. See, we got to stop them from saying that statement. Racism still exists. Because that's a very slick term these pro-blacks and these white liberals use. Racism still exists. As if, like, the goal was to make, like, no person ever say anything or do anything racist ever in the whole globe. Was that the mandate? Because I don't know. Was the mandate to make all 9 billion people on the planet never, ever say anything racist or do anything racist or think anything racist? Because this racism still exists statement is something that the left uses all the time. Birmingham. He had Charlie Finley mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Those are the people that he needed so he could eat in certain places, so he could sleep in certain places. And that's why when we get to today and people like Fred, people like Channing, people like me try to explain that racism still exists, we're not explaining it so we can hate one another. We're explaining it so we can understand one another, so we can all move forward. And to hear him talk about the Ku Klux Klan killing four young Black women and Life magazine writing a story about it made me think to myself, in 2015, Dylan Roof walked into a church in South Carolina and killed nine Black people, and they got... Hey, man, a little... A little funny looking nappy headed Negro just walked into a Juneteenth celebration and killed two women. One was a lawyer, a local lawyer, well known lawyer in the city, and the other woman was a um, very upstanding woman in the community. Also in Oakland, there was a mass shooting at a Juneteenth event, man. What you talking about some damn Dylan Roof, man? What about Juneteenth, man? Last week. And what about tonight? What about last night? It was a war zone in black America last night. 
it was a bunch of Aquarius roofs running around shooting up everybody in Chicago, Birmingham. You know what? Ryan, we're going to start with Birmingham tonight, man. In honor of you, Ryan, since you brought up Dylan Roof. We're going to start in Birmingham tonight. Writing a story about it made me think to myself, in 2015, Dylan Roof walked into a church in South Carolina and killed nine black people, and they got him Burger King. So when they want to talk about slavery and they want to say that you're a race baiter or they want to say that you're playing a victim, Reggie Jackson didn't play a victim. Because all those things I said about him in the beginning, he was able to accomplish facing the hate that he was facing. It didn't make him crumble and not become successful. It didn't put him in the spot to where he balled up and died. He still succeeded, but that doesn't excuse the treatment that he had to live through. And what I love the most about it is he could have used that moment to be fake. With as accomplished as he is, with the way that people see him, he could have talked about how great it was to be back and how far we had come. But he kept it real. And he said, without those people helping him, he would have been hung in an oak tree. That's how real it was for them. And yes, it is different now and we have progressed, but we still aren't in a place where it doesn't exist. And we need people like Ray. Uh, when, when one of you guys going to get hung from an oak tree? Because sometimes when I hear your takes, man, I wish somebody would hang you from an oak tree. But seriously, man, no cap, though. Like, when, when somebody get hung from an oak tree? When, 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 when is that going to happen? When do When is the lynch mob going to come through? Listen, anytime a group of white dudes gather up and talk about white pride <laughs> they get they get put out like a a, a cigarette button a wet ashtray reggie to continue being the ogs and part of his sacrifice is us having this show and part of our responsibility to honor him is to talk about it as well in today's let's start with birmingham today man salute to nick tal javon man he say yo op what's cracking i see you going live with your shirt off to show off your new gains keep it up og oh i i don't lift no weights man i'm just i'm just i'm just naturally like this man that's that you know what I'm saying? I don't touch a weight, man. Yo, Rick Rickwood Field is the field that Reggie Jackson made that speech at. That's crazy. Unfucking believable. Wow. That's yo, d d d d yo. This is absolutely ins insane. Yo, this is crazy. Rickwood Field is the field in Birmingham where Reggie Jackson played at. When he was in the minor leagues in the 60s, and he was um subject to all that racism. Rickwood Field. And this is where they're at, at Rickwood Field, where he made these um his his riveting comments about what he endured as a player. So let's fast forward forward to um now, man. Rickwood Field, man. Let's see what happened. What's happening in Rickwood, Rickwood Field now? This is this is amazing. Loved ones of a man gunned down this week say they're torn as they now plan a funeral and pray for justice. Thirty-year-old Tadarius Jones killed in a hail of gunfire Wednesday, just blocks away from Rickwood Field. 
WBTM 13's Gladys Bautista live and local from Birmingham after speaking with his family. And Gladys, they say this is the second time that they have found themselves here. Nice. Yeah, it's really heartbreaking. Jones's sister tells me that her other younger brother was killed at the end of 2022. So this feeling is just all too familiar. Wow. This sister lost her other brother. So she had one one brother killed before and another brother killed at Rickwood Field. The um the site of Reggie Jackson's tumultuous playing career in the minor leagues where he endured racism and the site of his riveting remarks a few days ago. That's, that, that's absolutely amazing. Wow. Sister nice. tells me that her other younger brother was killed at the end of 2022. So this feeling is just all too familiar. For Tadarius Jones's family, this week has been a nightmare. It's just been horrible. It's been... You know, with our family, it's, all, it's always last. It's just been nothing but tears and sorrow the whole time. With permission from their parents, Jones's stepdaughter, Harmony Johnson, and his niece, Kamara Wright, show us. He used to smile all the time. He loved people. And I'm going to miss him so much because he just did everything for somebody. How deep the hurt goes in this family after Jones was gunned down just after midnight Wednesday. Police say they received the call for a person shot on 3rd Avenue West just blocks away from Rickwood Field. When they got there, officers found Jones shot to death face down in the parking lot of a strip mall. His sister, Tarika Jones, now replays that night in her mind. Well, I'm like, why my mama keep calling? I looked at the phone the first time and I put it down. And then I rolled back over and she called again. So I was like, let me know. She rushed to the scene after learning what happened. And I walked up on the tape. You could actually see his body. It was crazy. Like, it brought me back to my other brother. Her other younger brother, Charles Smith Jr., was... Everybody versus injustice. So he was... um. He was a um he was fighting against injustice. Man, this is a tragedy, man. This is a tragedy, man. It brought me back to my other brother. Her other younger brother, Charles Smith Jr., was gunned down in December of 2022. Not even two years later, Jones is now here again facing the unimaginable as his family comes to terms with losing another loved one in a hail of gunfire. It was just so horrible and sad. Nobody deserved to, to die like that. Nobody. As police now search for Jones's killer, this family hopes justice comes soon. Hey <laughs> God, don't like ugly. <laughs> Hey, Ryan Clark, man. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that I don't think this was the clan. I don't think this was the clan. I'm going to go out on a limb, man. I don't think this was the clan that did this. I think the clan is off the hook, man. I'm going to get a clan a break on this one, man. I'm not even going to suggest that the detectives look into it to see whether the Klan has something to do with this. I'm not even going to suggest that the, I'm not even going to suggest that the, um, I'm not even going to suggest that the cops look into this to see if the Klan had anything to do with this. I'm going to tell them the, um, Go look to see if it was some niggas. Focus all their attention on niggas. That's what I'm gonna tell them. If I if I had to um, give the cops a suggestion, I say, no, nah, I'll leave the clan alone, man. It ain't the clan on this one. Let's see if it's some niggas. Let's see what some niggas. Let's go. Let's go shake some trees and see if some niggas fall out.
it was just a really, really difficult interview to get through, especially with everybody so emotional that you can really uh, try to understand. Jones leaves behind five children. One is on the way. Anyone with information is asked to call police. Anyone with information, man, listen closely. This dude left behind five kids, one on the way. Anyone with information is asked to call police or Crime Stoppers to remain anonymous. Live in Birmingham. You can call Crime Stoppers, man. Wow. That's amazing. Shout out to Reggie Jackson, man. And that was the sound of drums many heard today as part of a special program. Yeah, they got a packed house there, don't they? <laughs> they got a packed house, man. Birmingham really turned out for the uh, blacky black stuff, man. Suit to my man Jeffrey, man. Joffrey. Shout to my man Joffrey. Salute to Joffrey, man. Joffrey in the building. Shout out to you. Shout out to my man, Barry B. Barry B in the building. They turning out, man. Program at the Birmingham Museum of Art. Now the- there, is, is that twerking? Is she twerking? She got too many clothes on, man. Y'all want people to show up, man. She gotta lose some of them clothes, man. Birmingham Museum of Art. Now, the annual African Heritage Festival celebrating culture and history across all walks of life today. WVTM 13's Aaron Llewellyn live and local with more tonight. Aaron, you got a chance to speak with several people about just how meaningful this was. Yeah, Jarvis, many here at the Birmingham Museum of Art earlier today said that the African Heritage Festival was the place to be today in Birmingham. They said that they are excited that the museum is recognizing it was the place to be. Really? <laughs> this was the place to be today in Birmingham? Fake news, man. <laughs> you can't trust the news, man. They're a bunch of liars, man. <laughs> Yeah, Jarvis, many here at the Birmingham Museum of Art earlier today said that the African Heritage Festival was the place to be today in Birmingham. They said that they are excited that the museum is recognizing and celebrating African heritage and culture, but this is the only the first step in making sure that it's celebrated year round. Music, dancing, and storytelling. Maybe something happened to me. The Birmingham Museum of Art celebrating African culture with the African Heritage Festival on Saturday. That's what we try and do is uh, celebrate our culture, the richness of our music, our dancing, the creativity of the arts that we contribute to this country and all over the world. Sion Kajani drummer Barry Johnson and attendees like Kim Harper feel that culture should be recognized year round. I think all of this, especially during the week of Juneteenth, is just another reminder because we usually we don't think about our history in February. And so to bring all this together at this time, I think is a great thing. Ronnie Carter is also a drummer with Sion Kajani, which means the time is now. And he and other members of the organization aren't waiting around to fulfill their mission of educating others. This is American history, right? We're in here in America. It's all a part of American history. So it's very important. It's, it's important that we don't forget um, where we've come. And then also when you know where you've come, you know where you're at and then you can project to know where you're going. Carrying these sacred traditions for generations to come. I think the more the world evolves, the more we get away from who we are at our roots. So I have a 13 year old son that's turning 14 and there's so much that he does not know because the world that I was born in is different than the world that he was born in. And to help out with that celebration of African heritage and culture, the museum also offered drum making classes, African food samples, and fabric exploration. There was also even a panel discussion about the evolution of black hair. 
live in Birmingham, Aaron Llewellyn. Mm. And the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office hosting the first stop of their annual Hoop Fest today at the Bessemer Rec Center. Now, Hoop Fest is a free three-on-three -three basketball tournament aimed at teaching conflict resolution to young people. Sheriff Mark Petway hopes this will teach others to work out their differences without escalating to violence. Let's put aside all those differences and everything that we've had that uh, causes us to have conflict with one another. Let us come together and play hoops together and be able to get out there and enjoy one another. <laughs> Hoop Fest, three on three basketball rules, man. Hoops for Harmony. Baskets for Brotherhood. Maybe if we play basketball, man, we won't fight and argue. Said no one ever. Until today, yeah, playing basketball doesn't uh cause any arguments and fights in the black community. Who, what other community needs this though? What other community needs this, man? Who else needs this, man? Conflict resolution, basketball tournaments. Who needs this? But us. We're the only ones who need this. No one else needs this. But certain people anyone who's interested to participate. Only thing I want them to shoot is hoops. Put the guns down. Let's shoot hoops. Let's come together as a community, one community, and let's play ball. Let's play together. So that's what I would like to see the community come together and do. And well, two men are dead. Another. Mm. And well, two men are dead, another hurt after an early morning shooting in the Forest Pike Park neighborhood of Birmingham. wv 13s Aaron Llewellyn is live from the apartment complex where that shooting happened. Aaron, what can you tell us? A lot going on in Birmingham. <laughs> I think that's what he's going to tell us, man. If he's, if he's honest, man, he'll tell us, man, that there's a lot going on in Birmingham. Um, in the way of violence, man involving black people. Can you tell us? Yeah, John Sherry, it looks like Birmingham police are just wrapping up their investigation for the day. They've been here all day here on scene looking at what happened and looking at what led up to this deadly shooting. But what we know is that police say that this all started with an attempted robbery here on 44th Street South and 5th Avenue South. Now, police do believe that this was a targeted attempt and that the people involved know each other. Now, we want to get you to some video from earlier today so you could see what this scene looked like when we were here. Now, BPD says shots were fired just before 1130 this morning at the Oak Tree Apartments. That's less than three blocks away from Avondale Park. Now, police believe Oak Tree Apartments. And that's interesting because Reggie Jackson said that, you know, because he was willing to stand up to the racist whites in Birmingham, man that he may have been swinging from an oak tree. And here we go. Years later, we got a black dude getting smoked in oak tree gardens. Just amazing how all this stuff happens, man. This is like, this is just amazing. I were fired just before 1130 this morning at the oak tree apartments. That's less than three blocks away from Avondale Park. Now, police believe two men in mask approached another man to rob him. And that's when a shootout happened. When police got to the scene, they found three men shot. They believe two of them were the robbers, and one of those men died at the scene, and the other one died a short time later at the hospital. Now, police say the two men... So both of the robbers were killed. Both of the robbers were killed. 
Well, this I wouldn't count this as a murder. I would just say that this is this was just like um community service. These are these weren't murders. This was a robbery. This wasn't a murder. And and that's when a shootout happened. When police got to the scene, they found three blocks away from Avondale Park. And police believe two men in masks approached another man to rob him. And that's when a shootout happened. When police got to the scene, they found three men shot. They believe two of them were the robbers. And one of those men died at the scene. And the other one died a short time later at the hospital. And police say the two men who were who they believe were the robbers were wearing masks. This is the third homicide victim in less than seven days that's had one of those ski masks on, those poo shiesty masks. We can't stress to you enough how important people, places, and behaviors factor into the violence that's going on in our city. These are two men that are in 90 degree weather wearing ski masks, wearing ski masks in the summer. You tell us what you believe they were up to. Great point, man. Um, should be common sense, but great for explaining this to the slow people in the black community, man. Thank you for explaining the obvious to us, man. Two. Now, the third man who police believe was the victim in this uh, attempted robbery, it was also shot, but he is recovering at the hospital tonight and is expected to be okay. Live in Birmingham. Aaron Llewellyn, WBTM 13. Wow. Well, that wasn't a murder. I wouldn't consider that a murder. We're not going to consider that a murder. And um, two men are in the Jefferson County. We're not going to consider that a murder. That was a community service. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. The countdown to the 2024 Paris Olympics continues tonight. We're 35 days away from all of the action. WVTM 13 is your home for all things Olympics, including Alabamians hoping to make it onto Team USA. When he's not training to become an Olympian, Curtis Thompson is coaching students at Spain Park High School. This week, he's off to the Olympic trials to see if he will once again make the team. Brittany Decker met up with him before he left town. What's it like having an Olympian as your coach? I'd say these student athletes at Spain Park High School are pretty lucky to have Curtis Thompson in charge. Let them know that uh, you can dream as big as you want. Launching dreams. Bring, make Spears great again, man. <laughs> Gotta cut down on the violence in the black community. Make Spears great again. Blacks, you can't use guns, man. You got to use spears, your native weapon, man. One shot, one kill. Unless two brothers happen to be standing close together, then you might maybe could <laughs> maybe uh, take out two of them. But for the most part, man, you can only take out one person at a time with a spear, man. Make spears great again have Curtis Thompson in charge. Let them know that uh, you can dream as big as you want. Launching dreams. I came out here and just fell in love with it. It was fun to throw something heavy and see it go far. This arm goes out. Top tier athlete and devoted coach Curtis Thompson on a. All right, man. Salute to them, man. Um, Shout out to them, man. Shout out to the spear chucker, man. Wow, Birmingham is on fire, man. Um, I'm not hearing anybody talking about the Klan, though. Nobody's talking about the Klan, man. Nobody, none of these people that they're, none of these reporters, no one's talking about the Klan possibly being the suspects in any of these shootings, man. Shout out to um, Sebastian Kim. He says, take the buttery biscuit challenge. Oh, Miss Katie, you got me thinking about Miss Katie. Miss Katie got the best buttery biscuits in the world, man. Oh, Lord. Also, I put the fever in my parlay. Does Caitlin Clark go off versus Reese in the Chicago Sky tomorrow? 
But I, I, Miss Katie has a problem, man. Her teammates don't want to get her the ball, man. Her those 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 nappy headed hoes on her team don't like passing her the ball, man. Um, so I I I, I think Miss Katie gonna struggle to score a lot of points, man. But she's gonna have a lot of assists and a lot of rebounds because. You know, they can't – I don't know if they can really stop her from doing that. But uh, they definitely don't like to pass the ball to Miss Katie when she's open. They don't like to give Miss Katie um, in rhythm and get, so she can get her shots. Uh, so I don't think she's going to score a lot. They, they, they're, they're icing her out. They're, they're trying to curtail her development. For some reason, her teammates are doing that. I don't know why. Maybe it's race. Maybe it's jealousy. Or a little bit of both. But I think they're going to win, but I don't think Caitlin's going to go off because her teammates don't pass her the ball. Um, Shout out to Baby King, man. Baby King stepping up today, man. We need 10 Baby Kings, man. Where the, where the other Baby Kings at? Are there any more Baby Kings in the, in the Ock Nation? Or is it just one Baby King in the Ock Nation, man? This is crazy, man. One baby king in all of our nation. Ain't that a motherfucker? Um, baby king says, Ah, I got a couple of exclusive videos for you. We ain't out here in East Oakland recording film to get famous. We got policy out here. You get caught recording on a dope spot, you getting spanked. <laughs> Send it to me, man. Opportunity live to a gmail.com. Send it to me right now. Send it to me right now. And man, I'll see if I can play it. I'll, I'll review it, man. Breaking news tonight, an arrest has been made in a shooting that killed one child and injured another. Otis Montgomery III is charged with capital murder and attempted murder. Wednesday, Birmingham police say Montgomery shot into an apartment, killing 15-year-old Cornelia Lathan. A five -year he shot into an apartment. <laughs> Got shot into an apartment. That wasn't nice. That wasn't nice, man. This guy just shot into an apartment, man. That's, that wasn't cool. Can't police say Montgomery shot into an apartment, killing 15-year-old Cornelia Lathan. A five-year-old boy was shot in the leg. It happened, as we mentioned, Wednesday on 25th Street North. Tonight, Montgomery is being held without bond in the Jefferson County Jail. At least he didn't get a bond, man. I guess that's that's where we're at, man. Um, he didn't get a bond, man. Um, at least he did. Birmingham is crazy. I'm, let me... Let me let me drop the link, man. Birmingham was kind of crazy, man. Um, this is this is absolutely insane. Birmingham is, is is very very violent, man. And 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 everybody who's getting killed is black, like all of them. Um, Oh man, what are we gonna do about this, man? Um, basketball. Um, I don't know if the basketball thing is gonna work, but uh, I'm not sure if the I'm not sure if the basketball thing is gonna work. It might, even though it's never worked anywhere on the planet before. This may be the first time that it works. The little African drums. I I, I don't think that's gonna work. Um, those drums excite the African um, soul. You don't want the African soul to be excited in these people, man. Usually leads to violence, man. Yo, what's up, Jackson? What's happening, man? Shit, chilling, bro. Ain't nothing. Hey, I really oh, what are the odds that this shit happening right now and the whole day you just did right now? 
was the same shit happening in the 60s when dude was talking about. I'm sure this was going on in the 60s, man. I'm sure it was. Um, I'm sure it was. Bro, but Reggie, the clan, though. But the clan, though. Bro, Reggie Jackson was talking that shit, man. I was like, I don't know, man. Like, you, you think he was telling the truth with all that shit? Well, I think he was telling, I think that, you know, it was segregation going on back then. Yeah, for sure. And if you come with your baseball team and you try to eat in a place, they're not used to black people coming into those places. So you're like, you're coming in, like, what well, says 25 people on the baseball team, and they're like, hey, wait a second, man. You got black dude with you, man. Get that nigga up out of here, man. Because they never have to do that. They would because it was segregation, they never had to do that. Black people didn't come in those establishments. This would be like, you know, a time they get to enforce the rule. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's why, I mean, like, but black people had their own shit, too, though. Right, but he's with his team. He's traveling with his team. Yeah, right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They they presuming that they're going to eat together. Right. So, Javion, are you you saying that back then some people had, like, their own – Restaurants and whatnot, and like barbershops, I guess. Um, in different industries for them to I go mean, to. Oh, industry! Like, come on, bro. You, well, no, you, you do the you, industry you, part in there at the end, mean, man. Don't no, come on. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? You know, like different. Like, that job, smooth as shit too. You know, <laughs> restaurants, barbershops, and industries. Like my brain. Well, well what I'm, I'm just, saying, what I'm saying is. There was no word that one fucking movie about the green book, right? Where like they could go they, exactly. They, they I was had, about to see that. They didn't have like places they could go, like they, they had that. Is that what you're saying right now? That they had what they had businesses where they can go to, so called, yeah. Black, I mean, black people, I, I, I assume that they had something. I mean. I don't know how the fuck you got all these people clustered together and y'all ain't y'all don't have any services for each other that I mean it's happening right had, now. They had stuff. They had they had to. That's the thing about it. Yeah, yeah. most Blacks definitely. Had to have that stuff. So they didn't have a choice. I, they had to have them. Man, I wouldn't be shocked if Patel was still out there serving them. I, I wouldn't be it, shocked that they they were they were still out there providing them the services, the Patels and the Zamman. Were there were there Patels? Like it was a different country back then, bro. It was like it was literally like basically white and black, bro. bro, bro. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but I wouldn't would you be shocked if it was Patels and Sandman? No, I, I wouldn't be shocked at all. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked at all. Let me see. Let's see what, what's going on with the home. Well, groups also coming together to help keep the community safe in honor of one victim of violence in our area. Today is Anaya Blanchard's birthday, and this year will mark the five-year anniversary of her kidnapping and death. Wow. In her honor, Anaya's mother, Angela Harris, and her organization held self-defense wow. classes for young women. Harris says today is the least she can do to help others. Soon after Anaya was found, she said, don't let this happen to anybody else. And I thought, well, we've got to keep people safe. So we started Anaya's Heart, and that's our goal and our purpose, and we're trying to educate everybody on safety. Well, as of now, the person who is suspected of Anaya's death has not faced trial. Her story is also the reason behind Anaya's law, which keeps suspects who currently or who could potentially reoffend in prison. Wow. Um, it wasn't nothing he wouldn't do for his family. Yeah, nothing. He died protecting his sister. Deanna Casco. Okay, so uh, I guess this is a biracial guy, so Mulatto. Uh, yeah, mulatto. So yeah, so I mean, <laughs> technically, all the victims of um, crime in Birmingham aren't black. Technically, this one's half black. Um, it wasn't nothing he wouldn't do for his family. Nothing. He died protecting his sister. Deanna Casco's life turned upside down Monday. She lost her son, 17-year-old Dwayne Thomas to gun violence in Birmingham. Last time I seen my son was Friday because I was out of town for work. And I came home to send him off to prom. 
and I love, and I gave him a kiss on his cheek and I said, I love you. I'll see you next week, son. Birmingham police say Duane was involved in a fight with the alleged shooter at an apartment complex off Tuscaloosa Avenue. Police say an officer responded to that fight call, and when the officer pulled into the parking lot, the suspect grabbed a gun from a car and shot Thomas and then took off. Police also... Hold on, what? <laughs> Thomas. Wow. Not Birmingham. No, no way. No way. This, this clan member was out of control. I can't believe it. First of all, you got a big hood on and a white robe, and it's the middle of the summer. That's hot enough, but then you're doing crazy shit like this. Wayne was involved in a fight with the alleged shooter at an apartment complex off Tuscaloosa Avenue. Police say an officer responded to that fight call, and when the officer pulled into the parking lot, the suspect grabbed a gun from a car and shot Thomas and then took off. Police also say people stood by and recorded the incident. What's even more troubling for this grieving mother, Casco says she knows the possible shooter. The boy that shot my ch my child just stayed at my house with the world. The boy that shot your child stayed at your house. Yikes. Yeah, man. He's like that sometimes. Shout out to Pike Bishop becoming a member for 13 months. Mm. Shout out to T Money becoming a member. Right, man. Wow. Um, she ain't hear about the no snitching rule. I mean, <laughs> It's got to be, I, I think she's just dry snitching. I think she, um, I don't know if she'll stand on the, Ma, I think mom might stand on the trial and, and point him out. Maybe so. Maybe she will. Maybe she will. She's glad to we'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Ow. With the world nowadays, it's just so hard to tell sometimes who's with you and who's against you. Thomas was just two weeks shy of graduating from Carver High School. That's where he also played baseball and even met his girlfriend, Aaliyah. I just wanted to see him on that stage. I thought that was his sister, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's the girlfriend, man. What the fuck? Mm. Wow. She looked like so another fucking uh, mulatto. <laughs> yeah. So much pain, man. So much pain, man. <laughs> it made me so proud. No, I told him I was proud of him. He was going to school in October to be an electrician. He had actually started the class for an electrician. Thomas' hopes and dreams are now gone. His mother's days ahead will likely be rough as she thinks about her son who died at an early age. Birmingham City Schools has lost eight students to gun violence this year. Mayor Randall Wolf and Vouse. Wow. Birmingham City Schools have lost eight students to gun violence. Eight of their students have been murdered. Any gliders up here? Um, does that is, is that common in your areas where like eight kids get murdered in a, in half a year? I thought it would have been more, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would see been, more. Man, maybe. Yeah, it's just insane, man. Birmingham is is, is not a safe place, oh, man. Groups also. I'm 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 really shocked that uh uh that it's like this, man. Because considering what Reggie Jackson was talking about the Klan and all that stuff, man, back in sixty years ago and shit. Um, I'm surprised it's not like, well, that's eight kids in one school, bro. There's no national coverage, and we got to fucking try to make these kids safer. Just you know. Here goes the stadium where Reggie Jackson played and made his recent comments. York Rickwood Field is a cultural staple here in the Magic City, but its impact stretches far beyond baseball. wv 1013s Aaron Llewellyn talked to a man who comes from a family of acrobats about the legacy that he hopes his mother left in the nation's oldest ballpark. For the Daredevil acrobats, being daring wasn't just about stunts. It was like... Um crossing the line like Jackie Robson. It was like, you know, breaking into something that was, that, you know, we haven't done before, I haven't seen before. Andre Parker was part of the acrobatics team who performed during the intermission of games for the Birmingham Black Barons at Brickwood Field. It really gave us um, a sense of being a part of something that was positive in the community. Um, that should look sus, And bro. just being able to hold your head up because you were a part of a group that was Looked like we were going somewhere. The team was made up of Parker's brothers and sisters and other kids from the community 
who just wanted to feel like they belong somewhere. It just made everything seem real. You know, life was was uh, positive. In, in spite of the, uh, the, the uh, climate around, you know, we felt like we belonged. Parker says this close-knit community leaned on each other to help bring his mother's vision to life. We'll come off the field and go into the stands with our little sand buckets and, and you know, get collect monies. And uh, that would, you know, help her make the uniforms and buy props and those kind of things. And it all started at this house here in this Pratt City neighborhood where Parker's family grew up. He says this is where he learned to do stunts and tricks, but he never realized the impact that his mother's legacy would have. Being a child that young, I wouldn't even know. Oh, hell no. I know. All I knew is that mom wanted us to learn and she wanted us to be a part of this team that she was forming. Yeah, she my son ain't doing this shit, bro. This shit look gay as hell, bro. Oh, man. Jeez. Yeah, I'm sorry, um, man. I ain't trying to stereotype, but that should look sus suspect. Wow. Um, I think a good city would be Philly, man. Let's let's see what's going on in Philadelphia, man. Philadelphia is um, why not, man? Um, Birmingham, my God, man. Um, whoo! Somebody somebody need to add Ryan Clark. So.